All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to part two of Dark Elder. Now, I know you guys have been waiting for this, so I'm going to bring it out next day. You know, I was going to put it all in one vid, but it just didn't didn't seem didn't seem a good idea. So I thought we'd start parting long videos. I think from now on, I'm not going to sit down and watch hour long lore anymore. We're going to cut it into parts, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I honestly, I just don't enjoy watching long lore videos. Uh, and sitting there in silence for a long time. So, we're continuing where we left off uh, with Arch talking about cabals and what happens if you just murder one of their people and it's like signing a death warrant. So yeah, we're gonna get into this. If you're new, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And yeah, let's get into this. Even if that wasn't the case, they would still be virtually impervious to any kind of social consequence because Dark Eldars are scared shitless of homuncula. Yes, huh. the race All who right. literally lives of torturing others are scared beyond belief of these bastards. That is how frightening these little shits are. They are so utterly batshit insane, they dream up modes of torture so utterly beyond the pale that even the witch cults look at it and go, wow, not even we would touch that shit with hmm. a barge pole. And to oh, that's what 30,000 years of this shit does to you, bro. Turns you into the cruelest of the cruel. Make all of that even worse, because yes, it does actually get worse. They're not crazy, like I mentioned. They are, well, they are insane, but <laughs> they are fully whoa, 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 functioning. Whoa. What's the difference between crazy and insane? Does insane mean you're functioning? What? Psychopaths. They are right, capable psychopaths. of organizing raids right. and plans of such complexity, depth, and immaculate execution that there is virtually no defense against it. That is, for example, the hive world of Auxilian, who, rather stupidly, decided to make a deal with Eldar Corsairs. They would provide them with the locations of less defended squishier worlds, mm. and in return, the Dark Eldar would keep the fuck away from their solar system. Unfortunately, after a few generations, the people of Oxilion became so complacent with this, they started treating the Dark Eldar with essentially disdain, as Big if they mistake. were their lapdogs. <laughs> a remarkably bad idea. I mean, there are people in current society that choose to try and pull buses with their penises, and that decision pales in comparison to how stupid this one was. I've seen guys like trucks drive over them and shit, but, and you know, drill their head with a drill, but penis thing's a bit mad. Why would you do that, bro? Like, you took that, these guys are gonna come, and now they're gonna be doubly as harsh on you. Like, doubly. And as if just to really hammer home the point of how stupid it was, the homunculi's Kares Tekia led his own personal carnival of pain. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> let me explain the term carnival of pain, because mm. while I think the word itself should so be like a circus of pain. Be rather indicative of what you're about to hear about, I just really love the idea. It is essentially a personal army of torture victims yeah. who have been stitched up in so many horrifying forms that they make chaos demons look uniform and boring. A Never literal mind. army of uncontrollable, tortured, crazed monstrosities of so many <laughs> wide and varied horrifying forms that even the chaos gods would find it goddamn impressive. Releasing a carnival of pain upon a world is literally like dumping a billion angry mutated alligator lion hawks on the planet and then watching the ensuing carnage. <laughs> Blood is going to be everywhere. Scorch marks, screaming, bodies, bones. It is Let going to be the, the most vicious kind of carnal world you have ever seen. And yet, uh... five years later, when Imperial authorities dispatched a exploratory force to figure out why the fuck the planet hadn't said anything in five years, and Ugh. again, the Imperium doesn't really care if a planet yeah. goes quiet, he it wouldn't stop care. paying its taxes, but oh. Oh. it's oh. time for investigations. Oh, to... the IRS are coming for you. What are they called in, like, in England? I don't know what they're called in England. Hey man, that's how they got Al Capone. They didn't give a fuck with all the shit he done, but as soon as he, he didn't pay his taxes, bro, they came for that guy, bro. They came for him. Hey, you don't pay your taxes, we'll come for you, bro. You don't give me my money, game over. Cool. 
they did not find a single goddamn shred of evidence of what had happened. Not a speck of blood, not a single bone, nor a skin cell, nor a scorch mark, or a teeth mark, or a claw mark. Not even a hair. The planet had been made utterly sterile. Hell, the lights were still on, the power stations Ooh. were still functioning, Ooh. the goddamn toilets still flushed. But no that shit's creepy as fuck. I know I'm pausing it a little bit. That's like, what's that town where like everyone just upped and left and no one knows why? There's like a town and you've got plates on the table and books out and shit. No one knows what happened. People just decide to leave. You gotta say though, the Dark Elder have a great janitor crews, bro. They clean up the scene well. They clean it up. Not so much as a single solitary living thing. The homunculi might be crazy, but they are extremely good at what they do. In fact, let me give you this as an example to really hammer home the point. Just, just a little bit more, if any more hammering is needed. The homunculi have actually managed to make the Night Lords afraid. Ooh, the Night yes, Lords, there is Conrad. A story where homunculi managed to make Night Lords afraid of the dark. That huh. is right. Alpha Legion level of just completely and utterly <laughs> stupidly beyond the realms of reality. But there you go. That is how insanely scary the homunculi are. And hell, I haven't even really touched upon all of it. In fact, the homunculi are probably going to get an entire video all of their own at one point because... God damn it, Games Workshop really love these little bastards. They scared off the Night Lords. Conrad Kurz's boys, the ultimate of ultimate terror that comes from the Imperium, got scared. Oh lord. They never write any new army books for the Dark Eldar, but there is always plenty of stuff written about the homunculi, and considering everything, that is understandable. They are fantastically creepy little bastards, they are. after all. But we must move swiftly along. Let us touch a bit upon the witch cults. Now, the witches are, of course, frequently the, the real space raids of the Dark Eldar. Hey, man, has anyone seen The Witcher? It's a great, it's a great fucking series. I haven't played the game or read the books, and I know this has nothing to do with that kind of Witcher, but good series, good series. Where they will attach themselves to any given cabal to find cabal. new interesting slaves and to test out their skills in a less pressuring environment. The witches literally see real-world raids as practice, so to say, tests where they can play with new things and new ideas oh, that they can then later perfect and carry out in the arena. And the arena is, of course, the most important place for the witch cults. It is their temples. Each witch cult has their own arena. Their arena is their little kingdom. It is the basis upon which their entire mini-society within a society is built. The revenue of their arena is what feeds them, what finances them, what buys them their weaponry, their showpieces, their slaves, and of course tickets to the real space raids. And of course, in turn, the popularity and prominence of a given cult is based upon their arena and the shows they put on. Mm. Dark Eldar High Society will pay many, many monies to go monies. see the witches do their thing, and of course feed off the new and exquisite feelings, pains and tortures presented within. Mm -hmm. And considering the price, the witches inside are of course expected to put on quite, quite the, the show. show. You can never do the same thing twice in Komarog. If you have beheaded the enemy, the next on you need to cut their ears off first, or pluck out their eyes, etc, etc. There always needs to be something new. And if your cult is not- It's kinda like YouTube, isn't it? You always have to be doing something new. You, you get stale, I mean it's kinda like life, as soon as you get stale and just, just fall into the same pattern, people, people aren't gonna give you their time or money anymore. You gotta make advances. Not putting on the newest and most fashionable of shows, then you can be damn sure that somebody else is. Uh, now, of course, these can all vary to a great degree. 
For example, it might be a current trend that the witches should enter into battle with only one leg, for example, to give the enemy an True. advantage. Or that the witches should fight under the effect of a deliberating drug, for example, oh. that makes it seem as if they are fighting fluffy puffy teddy bears Hello? who are trying to attack them with baseball bats filled with love and compassion, when in reality they're fighting a gigantic gene-enhanced monstrosity that is trying to bash the poor little witch over the head with a piece of metal piping. In so it's like the gladiator arena then, but it's like a circus version. Short, the more unsettling, unlikely, unseemly, vicious, violent, brutal, and just downright uncommon a performance is, the more it'll be worth, and the more it will raise the prominence of the witch cult in question. Now, of course, this requires the services of many other parts of Komarog as well. For example, the acquiring of some in specially insane bullshit weapon might serve as a good attraction. There is a weapon, for example, that turns people and their weapons into glass, which is um, quite the oddity. There is another weaponsmith that might specialize in making weapons that don't really do that much damage, but hurt a lot when they hit, like neuro whips that overload the target's pain center without actually endangering the target's life. And of course, there are many, many Dark Eldar that have become very good at breeding large and interesting looking creatures for use as fodder in these various <laughs> arenas. Like, for example, a six legged, eight armed, uh, betoothed crocodile thing oh. covered in spines that farts poison gas and oh. fires tiny little oh, needles from its mouth. Oh. And then finally, as the dot over the eye, it has a small secondary head placed right above its <laughs> butthole who sings Merry Christmas. No particular reason, it's just Oy. insane. And that is reason enough. And of course, there is a certain level of competition between the various cults as they try to get the most interesting weapons, the most interesting mutants, the most interesting slaves, and of course, the most interesting performers. And as with most things in Dark Elder society, competition usually involves large quantities of violence. Witch cults are usually fairly large. The smallest are a few thousand individuals. The largest can basically be the size of armies and can launch raids upon other witch cults to acquire new and interesting things. If a witch cult has designed a new and interesting way of killing, for example, odds are that other witch cults are going to try and copy and or take away that advantage either through just simply stealing the technique or murdering whoever came up with the technique. And a particularly lucky viewer of a witch cult show might be witness to another cult raiding the cult in whose arena they're in. Most, most thrilling indeed. And of course, going to the arena is not particularly safe in and of itself. The um, performance quite frequently spills over into the Ooh. audience which Ooh. well to the audience like sitting in the splash zone bro don't sit in the splash zone audience they consider it a form of um extra spice i suppose uh, they can just be regrown seasoning. anyway so why not and really this is kind of how they view it now don't get me wrong they will undoubtedly defend themselves, and many cults even encourage the guests to bring weapons in case it gets huh. interesting. But this is, of course, for the high society of Komarog. The price of a ticket is uh, impressive, to say the absolute least. Right. And it's not somewhere the mere ruffians itching, of Dark Elves society can go. Oh no, the ruffians have their own arenas, but it is usually not run by the witch cults. Instead, it is simply run by gangs who like to stab one another. Mm. Which brings us nicely to Komarog itself. Now, Komarog is one of those pieces of 40k lore which is kind of difficult to nail down because the damn thing changes every single bloody edition it's mentioned in. At one point, it was in the warp. Then it was in the webway. Now it's not in the webway, it's in several webways. <laughs> then it's scattered over different networks of the webway. Now there are sub-networks of the network of the webway network that Komarog is in and is constantly expanding and yaddy 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 yaddy. The idea of precisely how Komarog works changes more often than an obsessive compulsive person would change socks if you gave him 100 different colored and different patterned single socks. 
and asked hey, him man. to put one on. Don't try that at home, bro. Do not do that to a guy with OCD, bro. I think most people have mild OCD, you know? Like, for me, it was the whole, like, you know when you play Minecraft and you're trying to build a house? I had to make sure it was perfect, like, same number of blocks. It really pissed me off if it wasn't, you know? It's just silly things like that that get me going. I don't really have OCD like that, like, not the extreme where everything has to be perfect because I really just don't give a fuck, you know? So, that's just... <laughs> This is how it is. Running flag. The version we're gonna go with here is the most basic one, namely that the leveway can be quite varied in its size and structure. We know there are areas of the webway that is simply just the size of a relatively small corridor, big enough for two or three people to walk shoulder to shoulder, and that's about it. Whilst we also know there are other parts of the webway large enough to contain entire ships and even craft worlds. Now, clearly, Komorog has to be one of these because there's an entire goddamn city in there. Now, it is also possible that Komorog extends out from Komorog, so these parts of the city aren't technically part of the city, but they are built in different areas of the webway connected to the city. And the Dark Elder simply considers that to be a extension of the city rather than an entirely new city. Though, to be honest, at this point, Komorog is less of a city in the ideas of the Dark Eldar mind. It is more like their, their homeworld, their refuge, their very own space in reality rather than just a city. It is their savior. It saved them from the collapse of the Empire. It is their mother who nurtures them hmm. and keeps them safe. It is their protector who allows them to stay separate from the rest of the universe, a universe who would very much so like to murder every last single solitary fucking one of them. Yes. Now, it is not impossible for us. Yes, we would. Jagatai Khan is on the job, though. He's coming. No one knows where the fuck he is, but he was coming. Outside uh, people to enter into Komorog. In fact, it has happened on several occasions. Um, Space Marines, in particular, seem to pretty much just enter and leave <laughs> when as they, they feel please. like it. <laughs> as I don't think I know of a single time Space Marines have entered Komorog and not simply just wander their happy little power armored asses straight back out again. So maybe the Dark Elder should work on security, is all I'm saying, but hey, you know, nobody's perfect. And speaking of perfection. You might be wondering, why did the Dark Eldar even need a massive fuck-off city that simply grows as the plot demands? I mean, there are dying species, right? There can't possibly be that many of them. Well, in the good old nature of the 41st millennium, the bad guys always have a solution. And while the Eldar themselves have never really been able to get around the long gestation period of the Eldar race, the Dark Eldar figured out a way. A very Dark Eldar way. Please don't be Demon Kulaba Part 2. Please. They would simply rip people's wombs out and start growing people artificially oh, nice. in massive nice. farm complexes. Well, it's not it's not Demon Kulaba, but it's not far off, is it? Actually, it's not that bad. You know what I mean? But it's still not nice. You know, part of me is like... This should be relatively basic medical science for the Eldar. Now, granted, mm. the Craftworld Eldar were considerably more backwards than their Empire Eldar cousins. They were well, basically the gypsies of the Eldar race, the travelers, etc. So they wouldn't have access to quite the same technology, as can still be seen in the Dark Eldar and the Eldar. The Dark Eldar have weapons that fire miniaturized fucking suns, for God's sake. Yay. The technology has gone so far beyond magic level, it's gone into the hilarious territory. But surely, the Eldar must be able to do this as well. I'm wondering about the ethics and the morality behind of all what of this. Kind of glitch? I'm wondering what the reason for the Eldar are to not do this. I'm thinking... It might have something to do with hubris. They want to keep themselves away from any kind of strong emotions. And the emotion of wanting to rebuild their race through, for example, this somewhat nasty method... Mm, I'm thinking that would probably be a rather strong emotion, considering the fact that Elder... Is it, not as, is it as nasty as he's making it out to be, though? I know it's not, it's not a great thing to think about, but literally they remove the wombs, they... And they put children in labs and they grow them, which means they don't they don't have a long 
pregnancy and the women can still go out and raid and do shit dude unless it's against their will but i don't know if it'd be against their will or not like you know so while it's not exactly a uh a nice thing we can pretty much do that in real life like we have ivf and shit like that i'm pretty sure we're close enough to growing can we not grow children in test tubes yet like it literally in a thing we could create a fake womb surely i don't know the science don't quote me but one has been chastised for this god only knows how many times, which eventually got the Sea Council to tell him to fuck himself and wander off into the cosmos. Mm. It's not the worst explanation. The Dark Eldar, of course, have absolutely no such concerns. It might even be the exact opposite for the Dark Eldar. I heard a theory once which I thought was pretty good, but also kind of... Yeah, I, don't, I don't quite know. The idea was that the Eldar do not reproduce because the act itself, reproducing, having a child, and of course the fucky-fucky involved with it, was an extremely emotionally intense process for the Eldar. Now again, bear in mind, the Eldar brain functions slightly differently for the human, so it might be an even more extreme experience. You know, the wish to protect one's child, etc. Stuff like that. Now, I don't really buy it entirely because whilst i can definitely see the pride argument the mere act of having all right ladies and gents it's glitching so i'm gonna take that off your screen and just put a picture over it because that shit is gonna make your eyes like it's making mine fucking lose the, f the shit dude having a child if that is such a extreme emotion which of course the craft world i try to avoid I'm kind of surprised they reproduce at all. Do they do so under very specific circumstances, very controlled circumstances, etc.? Do they just heavily sedate themselves throughout the entire thing or something? You know? Now I'm getting kind of interested. I'm going to have to look into Eldar Woohoo at some point. Woohoo! But again, of course, the Dark Eldar are the exact opposite. If this really does produce heightened emotions amongst the Eldar, this will basically be something the Dark Eldar would readily embrace and go for as much as humanly possible, or, well, Eldarly possible again. However, there is a tiny bit of a complication, namely in the fact that it's very difficult to find two Dark Eldars that are capable of sticking together with one another for an extended period of time without one stabbing the other multiple times and then trying to fuck the corpse. <laughs> this naturally complicates the entire process of, you know, raising a child or even just making one in the first place. And since again, Eldar gestation period are long as shit, this causes several problems. Now, of course, most of these are solved by the, well, farms. It also fixes the whole population issue since the Dark Eldar can simply just produce as many soldiers as they need, granted. They'll still need a rather considerable amount of time to really grow to anything worth a damn, but hey, luckily for the Dark Eldar, their very world provides the solution. You breed a million Dark Eldar, then you simply upend the entire farm, dumping the poor little sods right into the slums and ghettos of Komorog. Then you wait, say, hundred odd years, and you see what floats to the top. If you just keep doing this over and over and over again, you're essentially going to create exactly what happened in Komorog, a very large, very vicious lower class society that essentially has to fight tooth and nail against each other for the vast majority of the time for the oh, honor shit. of getting a recruited into one of the larger cabals, and therefore eventually being allowed to go on real space raids and establish themselves properly within society. It goes without saying that the overwhelming majority of these Eldar will die in rather horrifying circumstances, and a frightening proportion of them are also probably just going to become soul dead, having their souls om nom nommed away uh -uh. by good old fashioned slanesh. But on the bright side, all of the death and suffering that happens down in the slums will eventually rise up to the top, feeding both the upper classes and the lower classes. If anything, Eldar lower class society can be seen as kind of a microcosmos of how the Dark Eldar function in the galaxy as a whole, with the various smaller gangs constantly raiding one another in search for, well, prisoners and good old fashioned pain, pain, pain. Do not be mistaken though, not all Eldar are born this way. 
the aristocracy, as in pretty much every single goddamn society as far as we can bloody know, the aristocracy wishes to be different from the hubbub and drumbly nonsense of the filthy, unwashed peasant masses, and as such, they tend to actually birth their children naturally. These natural-born Eldar are known as the true-born, and they are considered to have a natural higher class within Eldar society. They are kind of the pseudo-aristocracy within the otherwise very meritocratic system of the Dark Eldar cabals. Now, of course, simply being a trueborn is absolutely no guarantee that you're going to be living to a ripe old age, as you're still going to have to deal with all of the other trueborn, not to mention inter-cabal fighting and all of that, but it does at the very least mean that you were born with access to a wide variety of heavy weaponry and the best armor that money can buy which undeniably gives you a hell of a lot better chances at surviving than literally just being dumped into the slums of Komorog with nothing to your name except, if you're lucky, a threadbare shirt. Come to think of it, a Dark Eldar survival sim would be fucking amazing. Ooh. Just saying, that would be great. Oh god, there are so many- Are these the Tau? Yep, it is up to go. Finish them off, Dark Eldar, finish them off. Fantastic settings within 40k, and nobody is making them. <sighs> it genuinely annoys the shit out of me, it does. But of course, other got the Dark sickle. Eldar are not the only problem within Komorog. You see, the webway has seen better days, to put it very mildly. It is collapsing, has been collapsing for a very, very long time, and Dark Eldar society as a whole is essentially living on borrowed time. And the webway sporadically suffers from, well, one could call them earthquakes, essentially, mm. where the walls of the webway start moving and occasionally cracking. When this happens, demons pour through. Lots and lots and lots of them. Since literally the demons! The is in the middle of the warp, and it is filled with Eldar, the most delicious of all morsels. Nice. Dark Eldar to boot. It is quite the feast for the Dentians of the Warp, and as such, if there is even the slightest crack in Komorog, demons will come flooding through in their hundreds and expanding the crack, then in their thousands, and pushing open the door a little bit more, and then in their tens of thousands, and so on, and so on, until the Dark Eldar can eventually push them back. They do this by kidnapping psychic nulls from the other races, and once the Tides of Chaos has been pushed back, they place failsafes around these cracks. The technology to repair the webway is, well, almost entirely lost. Essentially, the Craftworld Eldar still have some very, very basic and exceedingly costly ways of doing so. The Dark Eldar have virtually none. The only ones who actually, you know, researched this stuff in recent memory was Big E, and uh, Big e. Well, he's not telling anybody his- Yeah, well, Big E's fucking dead, mate. Well, close enough, close enough. Secrets. Anywho, after the breach has been plugged up, they fortify it heavily, automated sentry turrets, massive barricades, meters upon meters of plasteel, etc., and then they place psychic nulls in cages around the area. Now, the nulls, of course, are the primary defense. The rest is, well, mostly for show. It's going to delay a demonic invasion by an hour Ten or seconds, two tops, huh? but when you're talking demon invasion, every second does count. At the end of the day, though, all of this are stopgap measures. One day, possibly centuries from now, or millennia even, things are going to fail. There are going to be so many holes in Komorog that the demons will eventually start flooding through in such numbers that containing them will be impossible. Dark Eldar society lives on borrowed time, and they know it. They simply wish to enjoy their remaining years as much as possible. And finally, we shall talk a little bit about the real space raids I've been mentioning occasionally. 
So, obviously, they need to raid real space to get various resources. They can grow and manufacture a whole lot of things in Comorog, but raw resources are um, a rarity inside the webway, obviously enough. So they do need to raid for basic materials. They also need to raid for slaves, and on some occasions, food, but mm, they can grow most of what they need inside of the webway. And energy? Not really a problem. Komorog is more than vast enough to contain any number of power plants, enough to power the entire city. And even then, you only really need to power the important parts where the important people live. Whether or not the peasantry have to live in darkness, well, who actually gives a shit? But the slaves, now that is always important. And remember, they require a certain amount of them simply just to not become soul dead, which also means that they have to stock up upon slaves to be tortured essentially the same way that a human civilization might store grain to our- Imagine going to like the Dark Elder grocery shop for these some soul slaves. Yep, just go into the shop to get some slaves to replenish our souls. Plus a harsh winter. And not of course to mention the appetites of Dark Elder society. They want lots of slaves all the time, and as such, they have to raid practically all the time. Now, a raid is a major undertaking. It will require several ships, require hundreds at the very least, and usually thousands of soldiers. Here's the thing. The Eldar will not launch a raid they are not entirely prepared to carry out to its successful conclusion, which means making damn sure that they have overwhelming superiority in every way possible. The Dark Eldar do not take risks when it comes to their own lives, for obvious reasons. This means that when a Cabal is organizing a raid, it can take months, even years, to organize all of the ships, the captains, the soldiers, the various sergeants, the officers, finding the correct target, organizing the strike itself on said target, etc, etc, etc. Not to mention bringing the provisions, bringing the regenerative equipment, bringing the homunculizers, bringing the ammunition, bringing weapons, armor, spare parts, supplies, yada 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 yada. It is a full-on military expedition that additionally also needs to bring enough storage capabilities to actually haul off the prisoners they are hoping to take. It is a Herculean undertaking, and it is far from uncommon for several cabals to work together to organize a real space raid. Whilst in Komorog, you will practically never find two cabals working together. Vec doesn't want that, because that means somebody might build a power structure to rival his, hmm. which he considers to be a very, very bad idea indeed. In real space, however, the need to get slaves, and to do so relatively safely, outweighs the need to control the cabals. And as long as everybody understands that you can be allied on the outside, but not on the inside, then everything is fine. Besides, the naturally untrustworthy nature of Dark Eldar means that even the strongest alliance outside of the Dark City is unlikely to last for long once they return home and need to start discussing how to share the spoils. And so, with the preparations finally done, the real space raid can commence. Now, the Dark Eldar will pick a relatively undefended area. They very rarely go after anything that can fight back unless huh. it is of supreme importance. For example, they might dedicate themselves to a large-scale raid on a heavily fortified system if they can get a reward worth it. For example, Psychic Nulls, which is one of the most precious commodities in all of Komorog. Since oh, man, that's how real animals hunt. They just look for the weak link and they go there. Surely, the city's survival relies upon them, but these things are fairly rare. They will pick a relatively undefended area, preferably without a naval presence in any way, shape, or form, and preferably with as little of a ground defense presence as possible. Isolated mining worlds, for example, are perfect targets. They're drawn particularly fond of picking on the Tau, because hmm. generally speaking, while the Tau Good. have a fairly rapid Good. response military, they do tend to be relatively thinly spread, and they tend to concentrate mostly on their outer borders, assuming that nobody can hit them at home, an assumption that the Dark Eldar have been punishing them for quite a lot recently. 
Then, when a target is found... God damn Tao. They deserve that. They do deserve that. They will spend usually a week or two simply just poking at the target, launching terror raids, and making damn sure that the population centers they are targeting know that they are there. Because, of course, the more afraid the population is, the more suffering and pain the Dark Elves get to feed upon. This is a calculated risk. They will want to continue this terror campaign for as long as possible while inflicting as little real damage upon the population as possible. They want to kill a couple percentages of tops. They don't want to actually inflict any large-scale damage to the population, which is one of the reasons why they don't really like using any kind of saturation bombardment. That kind of stuff is only used in the most dire of circumstances or when they really, really need to make a point. But of course, they are also entirely aware that every day they delay, something nasty could show up. There are several Space Marine chapters, for example, who have a strong dislike for the Dark Eldar, and will hunt down any lead they can find that might suggest where they might strike next. That's the not... Salamanders in particular are not fond of the Dark Eldar, and the feeling is most assuredly mutual. As such, the Dark Eldar want to stay just long enough to not draw attention to themselves, well, Salamanders love burning, and they ain't gonna be resurrecting their ashes, like he said before. I mean, yeah, Space Marines are definitely not what you want to come up against. But also, long enough to make the planet's population nice and scared and ready for the reaping. Then, finally, when the last stage begins, they will try to capture as much of the population as possible. They don't mind injuring them heavily <laughs> in doing so, they have more than enough medical technology to... Stop them from perishing, shall we say. Perishing. After that, the captured population will preferably be placed in stasis, because that way they can't fight back. But this is only really an option for the largest and best organized of cabals, since of course stasis chambers are rather difficult to produce. Lesser cabals might have to rely upon simple bulk haulers. This is a subpar solution because these ships are generally speaking not particularly nippy and fast, which could present a very large problem indeed, seeing as after having spent a couple weeks on the planet, well, there is every chance that some unbidden guests might show up. But, of course, it's again a question of greed versus practicality. A bulk hauler will drag a lot more slaves back home to Komarog, but it will do so less safely, and with a slight bit less quality. The uncomfortable thing about humans is, we tend to get used to practically anything, even the heights of terror, will essentially just become background noise if exposed to it for long enough. So there is also a degree of haste in all of this. They want Extreme adaptability right there. Extreme adaptability. I mean, most humans don't know about all the horrors in the universe, I guess, or if they do, then I guess they're used to it already. <laughs> but, uh, hey man, that's some risk feast reward there, man. Do you want to guarantee slaves, or do you want to bring back a whole shit ton, but have a risk of losing them? Want to get back to Komarog as soon as possible, not just because they're afraid of retribution, but also oh, because their cargo be. will essentially spoil. Not to mention, of course, if you're going to be dragging a million slaves back home to Komarog, that is going to require a million slaves worth of food, and water, and all of the other necessities yep. that a population might require to not fucking die, since of course, Corpses are, well, they're not completely useless back in the Dark City. They can be made into drapes and other wonderful playthings, but nice. they are, of course, far, far less valuable. And there you go. I've taken something as relatively awesome as a space pirate slave raid and boiled it down to fucking logistics. <laughs> I'm going to start using that term now. Fucking logistics. Anywho, that has been all right. Video. All right, that's the end of this. That's the end of this. All right, there's the two parts of Dark Eldar, bro. No arch as usual. I am fucking tired, by the way. Look at my eyes, <laughs> they're closing. I still got to edit these videos. Anyway, um, yeah, man, you guys have waited. In the future, when we do our videos, I'm gonna split them into close to 20 to 25 minute parts, and we'll do those like that. Um, 
I don't enjoy hour long reactions and it, it makes me tired look it makes me fall asleep because uh, I have some form of I can't sit still for too long but yeah man the Dark Elder are interesting mini review time uh, the Dark Elder are obviously unique race I mean it's nice to finally know about what everything that goes on you know from the slaves to uh why they are in the webway to what they do some of their practices why they need to do what they do and why they're kind of evil um obviously one day the dark elder will be gone whether that is doing of the webway breaking down or them dying out or just Celeste finally getting his hands on them eventually they will be going uh while the other races may not be dying off so quickly who knows how long that will take Maybe someone will resurrect and rebuild the fucking webway and they won't die. Uh, or maybe they'll find a way where they can just defeat Slanesh. You never know. But yeah, man, thank you all for watching this. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.